morning. We have quite the travel day ahead of us. We started this morning at 7 a.m. in Mobile, Cebu, and we will end up on another island called Bulbul this afternoon. So we started off by getting a tricycle to a bus stop, and then we caught a bus from Mobile down to Bato, which is a big terminal for a lot of buses on this island. We then, from there, got another bus that then took us from Bato to Oslo, and then we've just taken a 10 minute walk from the centre of town to here, where we are now on a boat, which will then take us over to Pang Lao, which is the town we're planning on staying in, in Bhopal. The tricycle this morning cost us 150 pesos, which is $3.50 Canadian. The first bus cost us 224 pesos, yep. which is five dollars and fifty cents canadian and then the second bus cost us 120 pesos which is three dollars canadian and i booked the tickets for the ferry on 12 go we went and had a look for some a thousand per person yeah a thousand pesos per person so does that make sense that it's 35 so that rounds it to about 50 dollars for the two us okay yeah and so yeah, when you toggle that up, it's actually a pretty reasonably priced travel day considering just how far we've journeyed so far. arrived to our hotel in Bohol and we are absolutely exhausted. Traveling takes it out of you. It really does and considering the fact that we were on the road for the best part of about seven hours. Yeah we left at seven and got here what at like about three o'clock. Yeah is that eight hours even? Jeez. Oh my god yeah. So about seven or eight hours. So with that then we are just absolutely bushed so we're gonna chill out and then we'll pick this up in the morning good morning from Bohol as a necessity to navigate around here then we have rented this bike in order to make sure that we are suitably transported. This one cost us 350 pesos per day, so about 875 Canadian for every 24 hour period. Not bad price. Our plan for this morning is to go to the very famous Chocolate Hills Complex, which is about an hour and 20 minutes away. So I think we should get going. just arrived to the Chocolate Hills after about an hour and 20 minute scooter ride. Nick did most of the driving, but I drove 10 kilometers super slowly. I'm slowly getting used to the scooter. I want to get better at it so I'm not always so dependent on Nick and so he doesn't feel so much pressure and responsibility. I'll tell you what though, out of all of the drives that I think we've done so far, that was probably one of my absolute favorites. There was just so much to see. Farmland, jungle, tiny villages, and pretty much every opportunity. Some of the scenery was just absolutely amazing. I'm so sorry that I am not talented enough that I can navigate and film at the same time. We'll get that. 
hope, yeah, hopefully over time we can either rent scooters that have a holder for phones so that Nick can just have the navigation in front of him and then I would be able to film because I can safely say without a doubt that this is the most beautiful island we've been to in the Philippines so far. The natural beauty here that we saw on the way was gorgeous. Like renting a scooter is the best idea because you can just see so much. Anyway, we parked in the parking lot that's designated for Chocolate Hills. We have paid 100 pesos per person, which is $2.50 per person. And we got the free shuttle up to the viewing point. So let's go take a look. There are between 1,260 and 1,776 of these hills, and they're spread out over about 50,000 square kilometers. Generally, they're about 30 to 50 meters in height, but the tallest one is actually 120 meters high. Each of these is actually made up of limestone underneath the vegetation that you see on top. The vegetation right now is green, but during dry season, then that vegetation dries out, leaving the soil underneath. That then gives the top of these hills a chocolate color, which is why they're called the chocolate hills. And it does also help that because of the shape of these, then they all look like Hershey's Kisses. Where can we find some? I'm really hungry for chocolate right now. Chocoholics unite. Correct. After a truly stunning ride through what is called the man-made forest, we have now arrived here. This is the site of the Twin Tanging Bridge, which is just behind us. And Nick's a little scared of heights, so the fact that this is so unsteady, I can't imagine you're feeling wonderful, even though it's not so high, it's just... Oh yeah, I can see rocks in the river below, and the idea of falling onto them just does not sound that appealing. It's interesting though, because apparently this just used to be made purely of bamboo, but they have recently reinforced this with steel to make sure that it can hold the weight of more people. Okay, that gives me some reassurance. Me too. These twin hanging bridges straddle what is called the Sipitan River. And prior to their existence, people apparently had to walk down one side, take a boat across, and then hike up the other. So actually, the construction of these bridges was super useful and now I think they're mostly just a really nice tourist attraction that people of course come to get their Instagram photos at. We have stopped at 7-Eleven for lunch, like the classy folks that we are. So we ended up buying a coffee packet and then they have hot water so you can make it into your own coffee. Cheers. And then I just got like a fit yogurt bar and some muesli cookies. 
and I caught something which looks like a gigantic steam bun. I think it's called Chapeau. Looks all right. What are in them? Chicken of some variety. I guess we'll find out. Oh, and we got a huge bottle of water. Yep. And it all came to 294 pesos, I think. Yep. $7.50 maybe? Yep. Okay, we're gonna eat. This is the last part of our day and I am so excited for this one. So one thing that I didn't quite realize until we came to the Philippines is that the Philippines is home to a number of quite unique primates, but one of the most unique and also one of the most endangered in this part of the world is called the Tarsier, the Philippine Tarsier specifically. And as you can see from the photo behind me, they are extremely cute. They have massive eyes, which are apparently larger than their brains. They only grow up to about 15 centimeters tall, so they're also very hard to find unless you're really looking. But unfortunately, due to habitat loss and also hunting for the purposes of souvenirs and all of that kind of thing and also they're very sensitive animals so if they are disturbed too much then they've actually been driven to commit suicide and things like that before so as a result the numbers are way down so conservation efforts via sanctuaries like this one are super important to keep them around it costs 150 pesos per person to get in so that's like three dollars and 75 cents canadian should you come to bohol there are two different opportunities where you can see tarsiers so there's the tarsier conservation area and then there's the sanctuary that we have behind us we did a little bit of research to see kind of which one was the best and it seems like this one is really less geared towards tourism more towards conservation whereas the other one despite the name is actually really more geared towards just getting tourists in and it doesn't obviously say that profits are being put back into conservation and repopulation efforts for Tarsiers. because of that we chose this one so let's go in just finished our tour and it was very short we were lucky enough to see four tarsiers which is actually a pretty decent number because how they do it is every morning they arrive and the expert guides just go ahead and look to see what is out and viewable for the tourists who do come here sometimes it's one two three as i said today we got four you definitely wouldn't be able to spot them if you were just looking by yourself. That's how well camouflaged they are. You definitely need the experts to find them. And I like that they just kind of let them be, let them do their own thing. They don't try and coax them out or anything like that. It's very natural, but they're so cute with their little bug eyes, which apparently their eyes don't move, but their heads can move 360 degrees. So that's pretty cool. Because obviously Tarsiers do get stressed out very, very quickly, especially if they don't get a good night's sleep. That's familiar. Mm -hmm. mm. We definitely know two people like that. Because of that, then you are basically instructed to be completely silent through the tour. So rather than our guide talking through the whole experience, it was literally just kind of walking through him pointing it out. If he needed to say anything, it was always in a harsh whisper to be really respectful to the animals. They were all in sort of a state of like half sleep or something like that. And they were just so cute. Yeah, I really like how respectful they are to them in the sense that really like their signs supposed to ever to be silent, no flash photography, nothing that could scare them. Mm -hmm but it's so worth coming here just for the short little amount of time. Yeah, this is an extremely unique experience. Again, I haven't really read about this in most other parts of the world. So 
if you do enjoy your nature and especially if you want to see a really cute endangered species and look after its conservation then come to the Philippine Tartar Sanctuary. I think that we're just going to head back to our hotel now. <laughs> Sorry if we look a little bit like drowned rats. We have just got back to the hotel. It wasn't a straightforward drive because it started raining. Yep, yeah, we just popped into a 7-Eleven and then the next thing we knew, the heavens opened and we spent sort of the best part about 15 to 20 minutes just getting soaked. Sounds lovely. But despite all that, I had the best day because having a scooter here spells freedom. In order to get around Bohol, you could either hire a tricycle, but the more affordable thing to do is to definitely rent a scooter if you're comfortable. The roads are in really good condition, so it's not really dangerous like some of the other places we've been. And it just meant that we could do everything in our own time today. I really enjoyed absolutely everything we did. I just had a wonderful day and to top it all off, I just thought this island was so beautiful. We were surrounded by greenery the entire time and of all the places we visited in the Philippines so far, just in one day, this has been my favorite. Yeah, mine too. Don't get me wrong, the bridge was not my favorite experience. It just reminded me of like some childhood playground trauma, so that wasn't the best. But even despite that, I could still appreciate the views that we were getting from there. And honestly, the views that we just got throughout the entire day, pretty much through the entire drive, it was just glorious. And each of the different spots that we ended up going to was all very unique and also just stunning in their own right and to top it off we got to see an endangered species which was really really special they were so cute it's a shame that they get so stressed out though i know poor I, little babies i identify with that oh. you're welcome for all the research and planning i did to pick those spots yes absolutely because <laughs> i didn't know how at all <laughs> but yeah i think that's pretty much us for today they have a restaurant here where we're staying and it's pretty affordable there's nothing much around here because we're not in the center of bohul no, so know. we're just gonna hang out until it's time to eat dinner yep but with any luck we're in the process of trying to get something planned for pretty early tomorrow morning but it should be really exciting so we'll look forward to that but until next time take care and keep smiling